So now in the next case, um, we have an issue. And the reason, ladies and gentlemen, remember, when we're looking at the elimination or addition method, rather than solving for one variable and plugging it into the other, which we did for substitution, which we're going to go over again, which you guys notice here, here I have a variable. Here I have a variable that is isolated. It's by itself, or it's not isolated it's by itself, but it only has a coefficient of 1. So when I have a variable that has a coefficient of 1, I prefer using the substitution method. However, for this case, we're going to go over the elimination method. So when do, using the elimination method, remember, what we're trying to do is add or subtract two equations. But before we add and subtract two equations, we have to make sure they have the same coefficient. So you look at the coefficients of the x, of the x variables. And you see here has 1, here is negative 4. Here is 2, here is 3. So they don't have the same coefficients. So when we're trying to identify how to eliminate the variable, um, what we want to do is then determine to, um, in reality, you can, really, you can really eliminate any variable you want to. It really does not matter. However, if you guys want to kind of know a way to determine it, what I like to do is determine the variable that has the least common multiple. That means the smallest number that both of your numerators divide into. <laughs> I'm sorry, your coefficients divide into. So if you guys look at this, think of 2 and 3. 2 and 3, the least common uh, multiple is going to be 6, whereas the least common multiple between 1 and 4 is just 4. So therefore, it'd be much easier to get to, um, since, one and four, or since 4 is smaller than 6, that's going to be my common multiple, um, or that's what I'm going to determine. And also notice that to get to your common multiple for both of these, I would only have to multiply my top equation by 4. Where here, to get these to 6, I have to multiply the top equation by 3 and the bottom equation by 2. All right? So now I take my equation and I multiply everything by 4. And when doing that, I get 4x plus 8y equals 8. And then my bottom equation remains the same. Now again, I need to decide, Sierra, am I going to add or am I going to subtract the two equations? And as you guys should notice that here, I got, see, when I multiply by my multiplier, I now have the same coefficient. One is positive and one is negative. So therefore, if I want to eliminate that, if I want to get that to 0, then I'm going to want to add the two equations. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, so now let's add the two equations. 4x minus 4 is 0x plus 11y equals 33. Now, to solve for y, I divide by 11, and I get 3. Now, here comes another confusing part for Tansy that um, students get. It is they don't know where to plug in the value of y. So we know y is equal to 3. Should I plug y equals 3 into this equation, that equation, this equation, that equation? It doesn't even matter which equation you want to plug what the value of y is. So you can plug it into all four of those equations, and you're going to get the same answer. So the best thing to do is plug it into the one that's going to be probably the easiest, which I would say would be this equation, or my top equation. So I would write x plus 2 times 3 equals 2. x equals, oh, I'm sorry, x plus 2 times 3 is 6 equals 2. Subtract 6, subtract 6, x equals negative 4. So that would be my solution. Pretty much it.